Hey guys, Tom here with another how-to video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to choose a desktop processor. Before we get started, I just wanted to apologize for my last couple videos. I noticed that the mic volume level was a little high, so I've turned down the gain on that, backed off a little bit. I've also modified my screen resolution to shoot in 720p. This way there's hopefully no black bars around the videos and and uh, hopefully you get a better uh, zoomed in view of what I'm doing on screen. So uh, with that let's go ahead and get started. So how to choose a desktop processor. There's really a lot of things to consider. So what I'm going to kind of do is just run through what you're going to see when you look up a processor to buy. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and go to Newegg. Uh, Newegg or Tiger Direct's a good place to shop for PC components. I've always been a Newegg shopper so this is where I'm going to be at today. And so we will just find processors. It's under CPUs. There they are. Alright. So I think Intel's a little bit more popular right now so I'm just gonna try to find a processor uh, we'll just go with the, we'll just go with the 2600k alright so there's a lot of information on on here a lot of information a lot of acronyms a lot of different technical specifications to look at Let's just go through some of these, and that way it gives you an idea of what they what they mean exactly. Um, there's an overview page here talking about some of the highlights, some of the features. Uh, you can read some through some of this stuff if you'd like, but a lot of it's just kind of marketing more than anything else. Uh, the most important thing, other than of course just the product name itself, the details section. This is going to have all your specifications that you're going to want. That are really most important. All right, so let's start at the top. So here's the processor. We're looking at the Intel Core i7 2600K uh, model. The brand's Intel. The other big brand's AMD. Uh, this series is the Core i7 series, and here is the exact model number. So CPU socket type. CPU socket type LGA 1155. So the CPU socket type is is basically um, what type of socket this processor is going to fit into on the motherboard. Motherboards are designed uh, with a single socket in mind uh, or if, if a socket was designed to be uh, backwards compatible with a previous socket type they also might be uh, compatible with other types of sockets. Uh, for example AMD came out with an AM2 Plus socket it is backwards compatible with any AM2 processors as well as obviously the AM2 Plus CPU socket processors. So this socket here is telling me that LGA 1155 is the is the socket uh, the physically physical arrangement of the pins and contacts of the processor. When I buy a motherboard it needs to be LGA 1155 compatible. So that is the CPU socket. Uh, so now the tech specs. The core is Sandy Bridge. With uh, processors, there's going to be a lot of different type of architectures. This is telling me that the architecture for this processor is Sandy Bridge. Intel releases different generations of processors. Uh, the current generation is, is, this, is the Sandy Bridge processor. The next generation is going to be the Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, both are going to be designed differently and have different benefits. Uh, the, usually the newest generation is going to be the most uh, beneficial for you. So this is telling you it's a multi-core processor. Pretty much all modern day processors are multi-core now. Uh, this is just telling you it's a quad-core processor which means it has four physical cores on the CPU die. Once again, the name Core i7 2600K. All right, so here's operating frequency. 
So the operating frequency basically tells you how fast the processor is. Uh, the, the faster a processor is, it means it can handle more bits uh, per second. So with 3.4 gigahertz, you're going to be running at uh, like 3.4 million clock cycles, each clock cycle processing X number of bits. Uh, so the faster the CPU frequency, the more clock cycles, meaning you can process more information. Now, what's kind of misleading is you can't just compare operating frequencies. I mean, three gigahertz processors have been around for years. However, the architecture, the physical arrangement of the, of the processor, as well as being a multi-core processor, uh, that is all going to have an uh, impact on the processor. Uh, I'm not saying always, but typically um, an eight-core processor is going to outperform something like a dual-core processor, even if the dual-core processor has a faster clock frequency. So it's really all about a balancing act balancing the number of cores, the frequency, uh, as well as the cache, which I'm going to get to next. Uh, this is telling you also that there's a 3.8 gigahertz turbo boost mode. This is something Intel specific right now. Uh, basically what this means is that it's possible for the processor to turn off two of the cores, overclock the other two cores, increasing throughput for those two cores. And that's, and that's pretty much what this is telling you, just able to boost that speed up to 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, not really a deciding factor. So uh, now we have L2 cache and L3 cache. So there's actually L1 cache as well, but we're going. This is only sh showing L2 and L3 cache. What this is telling you is how much cache is available for the processor as well as each core. So there's four 256 kilobytes of L2 cache and then eight megabytes of L3 cache. All you basically need to know is the more cache, uh, the better. The cache is what is the cache is basically high speed memory. It's a lot faster than RAM, random access memory that you install in your motherboard. This L2 and L3 cache is a lot faster. It's uh, used more so than RAM by the processor. The idea is to load things from the hard drive onto RAM and then try to fetch stuff from RAM, put it into the cache as the as or before the processor needs that information. So that is what the cache is. Basically, the more cache, the better. Manufacturing tech, this is telling you that this is using a 32 nanometer uh, manufacturing process. Uh, usually, uh, the smaller the number, the better. Uh, the next generation of processors by Intel is supposed to be 22, uh, built on 22 nanometer manufacturing. With the smaller manufacturing, this usually means that the processor is more energy efficient. By being smaller, by having smaller components, you're going to have less waste with heat, and that just, be, just that just means you're able to run the processor at faster speeds without it overheating. Uh, it's telling you that it is 64 has 64 bit support. There used to be 32 bit processors. They uh, sometimes were called x86 processors. And this is just telling you that this processor is enabled for 64 bit. Pretty much all the modern name processors today are 64 bit. Uh, this is also telling you that this hyper threading support. This is kind of also something that's Intel specific. Hyper threading means that it's able to take a processor, mimic it as a dual core processor or excuse me, it will take a single core, mimic it as a dual core. Uh, what this means then is that this quad core processor is able to mimic itself as an eight core processor running multiple threads through a, th through a single core at the same time. That's basically what hyper-threading support means. Um, probably not a deciding factor for you, but once again, it's out there. Integrated memory controller speed, this is telling you at uh, what the optimized memory speeds for this processor are. If you were to buy this processor, ideally you want memory that's DDR3 running at speeds of 1066 or 1333. Uh, that's pretty much what you want to go with uh, for this processor. Uh, virtualization technology support, once again, this is something Intel specific. 
uh, with this with the Sandy Ridge processors, they also have some of those processors have integrated graphics. This is telling you that it says Intel's HD Graphics 3000 built in. If you are buying this processor, uh, you are probably going to be buying a dedicated GPU, so you may never use the integrated graphics. However, they do make a nice backup in case your graphics card were to uh, die on you. You can always uh, revert back to the integrated graphics. Graphics-based frequencies kind of, once again, related to the integrated graphics. Uh, we have also then the thermal design power. So 95 watts telling you it's going to be consuming 95 watts of energy uh, to, to run the processor. The cooling device is going to be the included heat sink and fan. Uh, pretty much any processor you're going to buy is going to have an included heat sink and fan. But most individuals, or some individuals, go ahead and buy aftermarket coolers to cool their processor. So uh, just telling you that's included. Manufacturer warranty, three years parts and labor. Once again, this is going to be specific for the, for the processor product you're buying. But hopefully that gives you some idea of what to look for um, in a processor, or maybe not to what to look for, but gives you a better understanding of what all these specifications actually mean. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do one more site. Uh, let's go ahead and look up one more site. When choosing a processor, you may be wondering, like, okay, so I've got this processor for running at 3.4 gigahertz. It's a quad-core processor. AMD's got another quad-core processor. It's running at 4 gigahertz. Uh, how do the two compare? Um, the 4 gigahertz quad core does not mean it's going to be faster than this 3.4 gigahertz quad core. Once again, you've got to think about the architecture, how the physical arrangement of the CPU is. And there's really no way to just know that off just by reading these specifications without doing some testing. Now, lucky for us, uh, this uh, website here is called cpubenchmark.net. They've done a lot of different testing, and I think this is a great resource to uh, compare processors. So we were looking at the 2600K, which is a high-end processor. So we're going to click here, the high-end CPU chart. And this is telling you right off the bat, it's Intel versus AMD. Let's take a look and see what they got. The best of the best. Intel Core i7 990X at 3.47 gigahertz, coming with a, uh, a rating of 10,949, that's with Passmark CPU mark, uh, this is the benchmark suite that they're using. Uh, this also gives you the price here for some retailers, so obviously a very good processor, very very expensive. Now we can bump down here, here's our 2600K. The rating 10,030, just 900 and so less than this 990X at $1,000 and our 2600K, $310, obviously a lot better buy, almost exact same performance and the price much, much less. So I think this is a really good chart here just to kind of take a look. You can see where the, pro so the processor that you're looking at where it falls on the list and once again there's a lot of lists here for mid-range low to mid-range low end uh, they have a bunch of other different charts comparing uh, various cpus so this gives you a really good idea of where your processor falls compared to the other processors now let's go ahead and click on the 2600k this gives you a couple more uh this is just giving you a couple more uh, details about the processor but I think this uh, down here is a really really uh, useful chart this is going to be the CPU value so this is going to give you an idea of how valuable this CPU is or how uh, for for the for the for the performance is it worth the dollar value so we can see with this 2600k yeah it's 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 pretty much up there I mean you're getting a uh, good value for your money um, there's obviously some more uh, uh, value efficient uh, buys. Um, AMD has always been known to be uh, very uh, cost effective for their processors. Uh, so no surprise to see them at the top. Uh, but the 2600K, it looks like a really good buy. Now let's compare that with that 990X we saw. Once again, really, really good performance, $1,000. 
So let's go ahead and click on that. And there it is, way at the bottom of the chart. As you can see, you're not getting much uh, for your dollar out of this processor compared to these other processors. Uh, the only reason why you're going to go with this route is if you absolutely need that extra 900 mark performance, uh, then yeah, go for it. But not really the best way to spend your dollars. Uh, you're going to want to stay up in the upper upper range here. The the the, tw the i5 2500K can't really go wrong with that. It's it's still a high end CPU way up here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. So there it is right there, i5 2500K with a rank of, or a score of about 7,500. So yeah, a little bit less than the 2,600K, but I mean, you're saving 100 bucks. And the performance per dollar, I mean, that speaks for itself. So really good processor. But hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to pick out a good processor for your computer, some benchmarks, some uh, price versus performance rate uh, uh, comparisons, as well as some uh, ideas of what these tech specs actually actually mean. So uh, that's been how to pick out a CPU processor. If you're running any problems with what you've seen in this video, please leave a comment below. I'm sure someone else would be happy to help you out. Also, if you have an idea for a video or have a request for a new video, please leave a comment below. Be sure to check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe so that you can always keep up to date with all my latest videos. Thanks for watching.